Good morning, everybody. Um, I think we can get going now. And um, welcome to this webinar today, Software for Woodworkers. Just a little bit about uh, myself. Um, my name is Graham Mansfield, and um, I'm the Sales and Marketing Manager at uh, Microconcepts. Um, I've been focused on this particular product that you're going to see today um, since it's sort of been introduced into the UK and um, it's quite an exciting, it's a, a really exciting product that sits on top of uh, Autodesk Inventor. I'm aware that um, there's a number of people on the call today that are from um, either a, an AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD LT background and uh, there are some uh, Inventor customers on the, uh, the presentation today. Um, so hopefully you're they're going to take some um, takeaways, but uh, the message is um, pretty, pretty consistent in that um, you, you, you kind of need to, to move from transition to 3D first, and then um, with the woodworking add-on, the woodwork for inventor, then uh, we're going to you're going to see some uh, uh, enhancements that, that basically deliver you the extra. Um, return on investment that, uh, that, you, that you need to deliver things like bills of materials, etc., cutting lists and, uh, and more. So um, without further ado, let me just introduce you to the product. Um, I mean, it was de developed way back in uh, 2012, um, it, and it's basically, it's, I like to call it an out-of-the-box um, solution. The reason being is that a, a number of customers that take uh, software today um, end up um, having to work out a workflow to meet their needs. Uh, the workflow is generally, um, I, I guess, orientated towards the woodworking industry, but um, traditionally, if anybody comes across the name Autodesk, everybody knows Autodesk, everybody knows AutoCAD, when, um, when Inventor gets introduced into companies, um, everybody kind of thinks uh, that the Inventor is, is very much aimed squarely at the, the machinery and the manufacturing um, sort of industrial machinery space when when in real terms um, it's pretty generic it covers a, bar, a wide variety of, of different disciplines so the woodwork for inventor software really as I'm saying um, is an out-of-the-box user experience it, it, it delivers if you like all the tools you need uh, in the language of, the, of, of, of a joinery and woodworker to, to kind of um, to, to deliver the, the, the terminology um, and, and the results that you need. So we did, um, before we introduced it, um, we kind of looked at a typical designer's sort of typical working day, um, and we were finding that um, the 3D modeling with standard inventor, um, on average, this is moving from say a 2D, 2D world of LT, to 3D, was taking still about 40% of the, the, the customer's time, but we found that a whopping 60% um, was still in, um, based around creating those uh, part schedules. We saw a lot of customers using Excel spreadsheets to kind of manage the project within the uh, the company. We also saw um, you know people using uh, Word templates. They were kind of disseminating the information and, and they were duplicating this information. They were looking at the drawings traditionally. Uh, in 2D AutoCAD and converting this data, and they kind of carried on the same, the same sort of in the same vein. They they created 3D models, so they hadn't really moved on. Um, you had the benefit of our parametric model that you could change, um, but you was they were still creating this uh, manufacturing documentation. So as a, as a, it was a key challenge um, to kind of come up with something that would address this this kind of area. And then those that actually moved to 3D. Um, were having problems where they wanted to know a workflow to, to define things like the material covers. So with a basic board, obviously, um, you know, you've got uh, different covers, a different fill, um, different edge um, that uh, would pl be placed onto that particular board. Um, and how would you report on that? And again, it was quite time consuming to, to imagine kind of having to model all of this on every panel every time. So. Uh, it was it was a key challenge in the workflow to kind of come up with a way of of understanding what we needed to do to to, to get this information out of the three D model. So another area that was um, was quite interesting was the, the the problems of grain direction. So um, in, in in a situation where 
we have, let me show this example, um, the model where we rotate the texture. Typically what happens here is that the um, size of the workpiece will need to increase uh, to, to suit. And it's quite difficult, again, to get the bounding box to be reported uh, with Standard Inventor without some additional tools and, and, and maybe some more programming in the background. So um, we want, customers were looking for this extra information. How would they adjust the texture and how would they extract that information? The other uh, side of things is where you have these different size shapes um, that would be perhaps CNC machined. Um, and everybody generates 3D models to the real world size, so that everything's actually you know, spot perfect for the assembly, it's spot perfect for um, the final drawing and, and to get customer sign off, but the, the parts aren't optimized for manufacture. And that's a key, a key point, and you're going to see later in the presentation, I'm going to take you through modeling, and, and you're going to be able to see how we can oversize parts. So this was a key area. Coming up with the final size, you need to be able to extend the part, but leave it in its natural, uh, original state. So it's that core part that we, we want for manufacture, so we, we've got a starting point to report it down to the uh, to production. And then another area that, that was, I suppose, quite important um, to realize is that um, placing hardware, biomongery, um, into, the, um, into the model. You know, most companies would expect to be able to pierce the holes. We want to, they wanted a, a method of being able to add hardware like dominoes and biscuits and, and, and just general hinges and make sure that when they're placed, not only are they visually correct, um, but to give an idea of actually putting the holes between multiple panels. And that's, that can be a challenge in itself when you move to a 3D world, um, purely because... Um, you know, there's multiple components. It's like it's like dealing with the uh, the components on the shop floor, as it were, in real world. In the real world, so you want something that's going to basically uh, equal the um, the drillings, the pre-drillings. Um, so all the pilot hole sizes need to be assigned. Any clearance holes that you need to be assigned can all be added into the uh, to the hardware. So that was a that was a challenge we had to address as well. And obviously you need to be able to then parametrically change your model and make sure that all this will update. And finally, uh, getting this information out onto drawings. How, how would we dictate this in a drawing? And, and that was a challenge. So as I was saying earlier, a lot of companies use Excel spreadsheets um, or Word documents or some form of a template, a digital template uh, to, to, to pull around the, uh, the, the office. That information um, can contain um, a lot of part structure information. So you've got the edge banding information. So we need a way of actually extracting that information from the, from the model. Um, we need to be able to extract things like the, the, the oversize. So some companies will want to add the material to the overall A size there. Some people will want to remove it. So again, we need something that's flexible to be able to report on this. And again, when you're trying to create this component where um, we've got the maybe the, the actual curves on the front face there, we, we'd want to add in additional material to just give that initial um, extra um, uh, remnant to be able to be removed from, from, the, uh, from the board. So with the Excel spreadsheet kind of concept, um, you know, getting a list of parts, you know, that's taken for granted. That happens in with Inventor as per, is, it has a standard bill of materials. But the, the, the crux of it is, once you start to drill down, and you can get length, width, and thickness, but what you can't start to do is to start to report on um, things like the, the actual material covers, the edging that's applied without having to model it. So we're going to treat each part as a single um, component, and you're going to see... Uh, how easy it is to basically define um, that kind of structure of that part. Also, uh, customers uh, obviously uh, need to know a little bit about the project as well. So there's uh, facilities to be able to key, uh, key in um, that information as well and pass that through to the spreadsheet. So another challenge customers have uh, moving to 3D uh, tends to be that um, 
you know, if they move from AutoCAD, they're used to managing a single file. It's usually a single DWG file. Um, if you're a competent user, you might have gone down the external reference um, way of working where you have a, a file linked to a top file. And that kind of concept is, is kind of primarily how Inventor works. It has an assembly file and then it has multiple parts. So you need a tool that will actually allow you to copy that design um, within the graphics window. Um, and then be able to then go and change that into the next variant. Otherwise, if I was to change the, the uh, component in one assembly, it would automatically update the component in the opposite assembly. So we just want to be able to basically pick and choose what size of drawer we, we require for our particular ca uh, cabinet, as an example. So how does it work? Well. We based the Woodwork for Inventor software on the core technologies of Inventor because in, Inventor is, is kind of the market leader. It's fantastic for complex shape description where you can pretty much do anything with, with Inventor um, it, it, from a 3D modeling perspective. But what it does lack is, is it does lack that additional um, information that you need to get out, which is the bills and materials, some form of automated drawing um, package and then potentially even CNC code as well. So we do have a module that comes in a couple of guises. We have the Woodwork for Inventor package that we'll see today, um, but there is a Woodwork CAM for Inventor um, that uh, is, is available to kind of process those, um, those panels if you haven't got uh, any CNC software. So as we said, we can design any types of um, particular furniture with the, with the package um, uh, and assign any particular uh, material and the idea is is to use this skeleton design approach so we we take a very rudimentary approach to modeling which is fantastic when you're kind of massing out or you're, you're, you're kind of providing space envelopes within a space and then we then convert and, and, and turn that into a, um, a, a fully featured model so the idea is if we was to, to to go back to the original skeleton and we change that then everything will actually update um, accordingly. So it becomes a, ma a master, as it were, that drives the, uh, the full complicated assembly. So I did allude earlier talking about parts, um, and they're actually drawn in their finished state. So we, we have a component like this, but what we want to be able to do is to split it apart, and it might be that the core is actually made up of, as, uh, as a multi-layer board, and we want to represent that in our, in our bills of materials. So again, without actually modeling everything, very, it would be very difficult to do this out just with a standard uh, seat of inventor. And another great area um, is just things like um, adding material and taking material away. Um, so a, a typical finger joint example here, these joints can be automatically uh, assigned to the, to the model and Effectively, it's adding on that extra material and taking the material away from you. So it's always going to report on the, the true length of the part um, without having to worry about setting up complicated parameters um, that you might have had to have done in the, uh, in the past. So that's for the, uh, the inventor customers on the call today. So the, old, the whole, I was saying, the whole model can be used as a prototype. So you could build a design, and then you can then make a variation of that design using the the assembly copier tool that's built within the Woodwork software. So you know it's very quick and easy to make a different variation. When we take the bills and materials information from the model, um, what we're we're reporting on is the um, the. the the true thickness. So we, we've got the, the cover thickness, we've got the edge thickness that we can play around with, um, and we can predefine that. We can oversize and get that information directly from the model, and we can show texture direction in our drawings automatically as well. Um, it will tell you whether the parts got grain or not on particular covers, so that's, that's another unique. Um, and the great thing is the template can be customized, so you don't have to be a programmer, it's fairly straightforward we get a complete uh, set of sample files that comes with the package. It's quite straightforward to be able to interpret those and copy and paste and integrate perhaps into your existing uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, or you can obviously um, create uh, one from scratch or base your, your new spreadsheet on, on, on the existing. So in essence, what we're talking about is reduction of um, manual 
um, calculations. It's basically to automate the process to generate this uh, information for you automatically at a, at a press of a button, which is ideally what's going to uh, reduce your uh, errors. So I did allude to uh, creating what I call drawing bundles, automated drawing bundles. So they can be uh, typically a single panel. So um, obviously there's lots of holes and cutout information um, and the edging information. So how would we display that? Well, we can have a grain indicator placed on the sheet. Uh, we can define the hole information and we can then uh, define the uh, edging and you can see it actually assigns the edge codes um, automatically on there as well. You can then um, see that it will actually apply a datum for you with the, over, the overall sizes and that becomes a snapshot um, of that panel that, at that point. You can also generate uh, an optional hole table so by default it will place that on the drawing sheet in a, in a, uh, when it creates it automatically for you so you, you don't have to place it manually um, and also there's a material legend that gets applied to the sheet as well so that covers off the material code what its material the, the actual name of the part etc um, and the overall size parameters are passed to the drawing border so you can see straight away we're talking about automating that that kind of whole process so without further ado, I guess I just want to introduce you to a quick demo. So I've, I've broken this uh, presentation using this desk into um, several key areas. Um, and the first is just to kind of introduce you to modeling. So for those that use AutoCAD uh, LT and AutoCAD on the call, um, the, next, the next portion is, is, is highly relevant. Um, and then for the inventor customers, um, if you just bear with me, it'll just be about four minutes. Um, we'll then start to move on to um, some cool technology um, to, to show you how to create the, uh, the actual cabinets. So as I said, we're going to base it on the skeleton design. Um, so we've got this, this kind of concept. So we need to build this skeleton. So you, you can use standard inventor. And here you see on the screen, uh, it looks and feels a little bit like uh, AutoCAD in, in, in the menu structure. And I'm just going to use the simple box command just to size up the, uh, the overall size um, and just going to give it a, a quick depth of about 850, 850 there. So we've just defined a quick spatial envelope um, and all I'm going to do now is, is, is to be able to start to, to modify this. So first thing I want to do is, is maybe turn it into a, a sort of a clear colour um, and put some model edges on so we can see the part. And you can see that the interface is really intuitive. You can just draw just like in 2D um, place dimensions just like in AutoCAD but the difference here is, is obviously as I place these dimensions the model uh, sketch is actually updating so this is the, the, the great thing of parametrics and you can start to relate these dimensions to each other uh, which makes life um, very very easy to, to go and change things so again the heads up display you can go and choose maybe a cut we just say we want to move that extrusion through all um, and it automatically knows it needs to do a cut We've got some other cool tools on here, um, such as uh, Fillet. So we just put in a, a, a variable. And you can see there, just by dragging the, uh, the direction indicator, um, it's easy to change. So I'm just using a technique now just to remove some material. And I've just used a different thickness. Um, what I need is I need an 80 millimeter panels for the back. Um, but I want the worktop to be um, physically 25. So I've got two material thicknesses there, but it's still one part at this stage. So this is just one approach to modeling. So now all I do is I just sketch on the faces and I just create new solid bodies based around that particular shape. I can direct edit, so I need to bring the back um, further up, so I'll just move the, uh, the back in by the material thickness. And you can see it's very quick and easy, you just sketch on the panel or, or, or that particular face um, and then you can then just simply say extrude to to the next face. Let's do the inside face here. So again, so we should have a few solids here. So we've, we're finished with the uh, solid one but we've got the three solid bodies. And I'm just going to put in a, a simple rectangle sketch at the bottom here to denote the spaces of where those cabinets are going. We're going to put a work plane in because I want to extrude this particular um, profile 
up to that work plane. If I change the position of that work plane, then um, the height of that unit will change as well. So you can see we're st starting to automate um, and place a lot of information into a core model that would become the basis um, of the driving shape to drive the rest of the parts. So let's put um, the final, this will be the, uh, the cabinet with the drawers, so we'll just place that in there. And I'm just going to change the actual uh, material colour to uh, a polycarbonate clear there. So all I'm going to do now is just drop in a, a simple support. So we need to, I need to support the top of the desk to the underside of the, uh, of the actual um, uh, desktop. So I'm just using some tools here to constrain and make sure things are aligned centrally. It's all good practice to keep things centred up, uh, but you're not limited to, to, to doing it that way. So you can see straight away I've just extruded that particular, or drawn that sketch of that rectangle, I've sized it, and then I've literally extruded it to the next face, the underside face um, of that particular panel. And remember, if I change the uh, the work plane um, of the height of the box, then it will it will actually update automatically. So the next process is to um, sketch on this back face here and just drop in a simple uh, cutout, just to give it a little bit of style. And you can see as I've been creating these dimensions, um, it's very quick and easy to to kind of if you've not done it quite right the first time, make a quick change as you go along. It's not it's not a problem. Let's put some fillets on just to round off, put some nice radiuses in there, and it's pretty much um, pretty much done. So the next stage would be to kind of move into the browser, and as you can see, I'm renaming the parts. So it's good practice to give it some kind of identity, and these parts will be created into solid assembly parts uh, in a moment. So pretty straightforward. Um, Nothing um, complicated about that. I'm just going to save it away. I'm just going to give it a name. And I think we're pretty much pretty much done there. So just to show you, if we change the sketch, you can see it updates. If we change it back again, the, the, the part will parametrically change. So this is a part. Now I turn it into an assembly. So I just need to choose a new target and make sure that all these parts are going to be placed into that folder and it kind of looks exactly the same but the difference is is that each one of these parts you can actually switch off or you can um, effectively um, edit um, in its own part window so it means you can actually take that component and produce um, if you wanted CNC code directly from that particular component so you just see as I've been um, creating here these are work planes and I'm going to use these in my design in, in a while to place some, uh, some hardware. So this is going to be my intersecting parts um, that I'm going to use in a while. So putting the work planes on the model is just a way of aligning where my um, connections are going to be uh, in the future. But everything's on this source model. I think we're nearly done there. just need to center that up. Good. So um, I'm just going to turn the visibility uh, of those components back on and I'll pretty much save it and we're done. So that it, that whole process there was was something that you could actually pretty much do in, in Inventor LT if you wanted to. Um, you you know we don't have you, the, the, the add-on doesn't work with Inventor LT but that, that was a demonstration of what we call solid body modeling. Um, it's not the only way you can uh, create these models but um, it's kind of the most efficient way um, we've discovered to, to, to generate this for you. So the next, um, the next up would be to, to, for the inventor customers to look at this iCopy design. So iCopy is a great way of actually placing this, uh, these units into the, uh, into the model um, to give it a little bit more uh, kind of automation. So we already have a, um, a predefined cabinet that we've, that we've modeled up. We're just checking the height that I need here. So I need to, 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 to find out what particular height we're, we're going to be dealing with, which is 625. I'm just going to go into the iCopy uh, tool, and I'm going to go and find uh, the actual case that I need. So here's the predefined case. So it's sized at uh, a quite a small size at this stage, and all I do is I literally assemble it using the sketch that you see here on the screen. So I just need to uh, manipulate the view around, um, 
we just pick up at the corners and follow the prompts that it says it says constrain I copy it wants the front left point the front uh, right point the back right point and I'm just setting now the uh, the height I can play around with the drawers etc um, and I'll be showing you that in a moment but the great thing here is that it builds a complete copy um, of that particular design at the new size so what we can do is um, we can actually put that in a, uh, a user path so we can go off I'm just going to drop it into a a new um, into a new folder and what we're going to do is we're going to name up um, the actual we're going to put some prefix um, naming on it just to make the components unique so in some instances you'll want to share components um, and in some instances you'll want to completely replace it so sometimes 95% of the components will be different anyway uh, and I'm just going to give this a quick prefix um, so I'm just going to put in A G1 there. I'll say uh, OK on that. What it will do is it will actually go and create. So it's, this is a process of creating those components at that point for that particular assembly um, based on those um, parameters. And we just need to do the same for the um, for the opposite side. So pretty quickly we'll just go through. And this uh, this other one is a little bit different. Um, this is the drawer case. This one's got some drawers in it. So it's already been pre-configured and what we're going to do is we're going to play around with maybe um, make, maybe make some changes on the drawers. So again, it's it's fairly straightforward. The process was select the left point in this in this example, which orientates the uh, the unit. It then sizes the unit, so we're just sizing the width. And now we're just going to size the back, so we just need to pick up on the back point. We could change the ball thickness as well if we wanted to. I'm going to play around with um, some of the uh, draw quantities. So it, every time you make a design change, it actually is updating that information. And again, um, we just want to put in the in the height there, uh, which was that was 625, wasn't it? Yeah. So that will then build that assembly directly for you. Again, if you want to change the uh, the draw quantities, then again it'll just update those. Um, dynamically for you. So just going next, um, we'll refresh the graphics and then again we're into the same dialog box and it's as quick as that. I haven't found anything as quick uh, to generate this information on the fly um, with this sort of um, technology um, directly um, without having to, to drive things with complicated um, parameters. So yeah, it's pretty quick and easy. I'm just going to choose the uh, temp case uh, folder again. So that could be the folder that you're using on a, on a particular uh, project. And in this example, we're just going to, um, I'm not going to put a suffix on, but I'll just again put a unique GM on, on the front of that. And then it goes off and it'll build that um, assembly automatically for you. Uh, that's pretty much done. So um, I guess um, the next thing up would be to, to, to think about how we'd actually start to use some of the woodworking tools. So, Again, that's a, a little bit of uh, inventor technology um, based on that um, that that kind of uh, portion of the of the demo. The next up is to start to drill into the woodwork for inventors. So let's look at the materials. Um, let's look at some covers and some some edge banding. So what I wanted to do was just to say that um, we have different fill uh, types. So these are like categories. We have a solid board. Uh, or solid piece timber, um, we have board, we have laminated board, we can make up multi-layer boards, um, we've got a type for uh, desktops, um, and then the rod is any extrusion, any piece of architrave, any, any piece of aluminium extrusion, um, it's not limited to, uh, to timber, but um, you know, it's basically giving you that ability to then split that information out into the, into the spreadsheet. The final bit is the covers. So we address veneering, uh, edge banding, and even painting um, separately uh, within the package. And the fantastic thing is, is that we actually report this information differently in the spreadsheet. So we're actually giving a linear meterage for the, uh, for the profiles. Um, boards are measured in square, square meters, um, and solid timbers measured in uh, cubic meters. So it's Another way, um, generally you kind of set up that part type and it's quite ma a manual way of trying to report this um, if, if you don't have um, these additional tools. 
So let's have a quick look at the um, the woodworking. So it sits as a simple rib ribbon um, within the uh, the tool. So it moves from left to right. Let's look at the material assignments. So here they all are. So they're all in there, laminated boards. We can go and find uh, a particular style so we can match it up. So in this case, I'm just picking the, uh, the components in the graphics window. I could pick them from the what we call the browser. And straight away, you see it shows, it exposes the raw edge of, the, uh, of that laminated board. Um, if we wanted to have um, solid or just normal board, um, you could do, use that and then apply covers onto the core. So we could just use a piece of standard MDF. Um, what we want to do is, is perhaps define the supports for uh, the interconnections and we'll just make those out of solid plastic. Um, and then what we're going to do is just go into the edging. And again, the edging, you know, it, it can be different sizes and thicknesses. You can play around with that. And at the moment, I've got it to sync. It's syncing within the within the model. Um, and we just literally whiz around the model picking up these, these edges. Um, and you can see it'll find the loops for you. And when we apply them, um, it's all good and it's all pretty much it's all applied. If you have a quick look at the bill of materials. So this is a little bit different for those that are used to seeing Inventor. We actually have a, a bomb engine. It's a kind of a bomb specification generator. Drills into the, um, into the actual database finds the length, width and thicknesses um, and then if you break down on each of these parts you can see the cover information so you can start start to understand how we're trying to report this information um, directly um, from, the, from the system. So we might have a situation where we, we've got um, to oversize this particular board so you can actually um, oversize specifically on, on an edge um, so all we've got to do here is just literally set it up for, it's either covers or the core. So we've got the fill, the fill material, we pick the edge, and in this case, you just can extend it um, by a particular size. And if you don't want it um, as big as that, you can just adjust it. So you've got apply for all edges or just one edge at a time. So either or. So we'll have that 25 on that side and on, on the other opposite left-hand side, we'll have that 25 as well. So we just affected two sides. If we go to the bill of materials, you'll see straight away if we drill down to that to that particular um, top, you can see now the length oversize that's been applied directly uh, into the uh, into the model. So again, we haven't affected the overall size of the part. It's still the finished size, but we're going to be reporting. We've given it some extra intelligence to be able to report on on that down the line. So another key area um, that customers um, find challenging is placing a lot of hardware. And a, and a lot of customers we've approached have, have said that they kind of leave it up to the production manager to, or the production department once the design's been created to work out how the, the parts are going to be jointed. And for those customers that have gone down the CNC route, that's kind of unacceptable. You've got to define up front um, all the screw positions, all the hole information, um, as, as, because the part that can then be read in directly into the CNC software um, and then processed. So um, we've got a, a situation where, if you recall, we placed the, um, the work planes. Um, so what we want to do is we want to tie in those um, supports. So that, I'm just going to bring those work planes back. Um, so you can toggle them on and off. And I'm just going to go and find myself the minifix joint. And all I do is I just follow the information. It just says, this is a standard comp library component that comes with the software. We just choose the faces that we want to select, and it's placed those four minifix in there automatically. And uh, if I just go that, through that process again, so we've defined the two uh, nested boards, the internal face, and the two axis planes, and I get another four placed. Very quick and easy. Um, we need to connect up the uh, top to the, uh, to the side panel here, so again, in exactly the same way, I can just define and I get another three placed in. So it's very quick and easy to, um, to generate this information. We've got some cool display tools in here, so you can just toggle to see the standard components within the, uh, the assembly. Um, and these parts are iParts. So for those that are familiar with iParts and use Inventor already today on the call, you should be familiar with this, but you can get up and change on the fly the particular components. 
So the situation here is you might just want to flip the um, orientation of the DAO. So the DAOs are inboard and we can use our iMatch uh, tool to be able to then go and paste that information, a bit like match properties in, uh, in standard AutoCAD. Pretty much done. So you can see very quickly it's quite easy to, to place hardware um, directly into, uh, into the model. And then obviously that's going to be reported to, to you in the bill of material specification. So that's shown directly uh, with, the, uh, with the blue definitions there. So if I just show you what we could do is select a specific uh, template. We can then define a name and it actually then will strip out all the information from the bomb specification engine and populate a, a comprehensive spreadsheet for you. So this is using the standard um, Excel spreadsheet that comes with the software. Um, and as you can see, it's reported on that information um, and it's grouped into multiple tabs at the moment. So we've got, um, say, the complete parts list there. We've grouped into the laminated boards, the standard boards, the units. We've got a cutting list, and again, it reports on the covers. And we're using codes to, 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 to fill in this information. And again, we're summating linear metrage for the edge banding, for example. Here you can put in customer name and information, so a really cool place to, to fill in this sort of information. And if I just show you another customer example of um, maybe a different style of, of report that we can get. So this particular report's been created um, to show the length, width, the thickness of material, but also um, we're reporting the thicknesses for the actual covers as well. Um, so that might be a little bit more um, re relevant. And again, you can have a, a separate sheet that just shows the ironmongery rather than trying to put it all on one sheet. It's really flexible, really easy to extract this information. You can have custom properties um, and develop this into a really comprehensive solution for the company. Um, and then we get the situation where we've placed all that hardware into the assembly and we need to provide the cutout information. So we have this fantastic sculpt tool that understands the difference between um, adding material and taking material away. So I'm just going to put in, a, this is a custom part, so I'll just put a couple of work planes in so you can see how to create work planes again um, for something on the fly. So I just need a couple of work planes there just to give me an intersecting point and I'm just going to go and find a, uh, an electrical USB uh, power distribution um, unit so just putting this uh, Hafila unit in directly by selecting the top face um, and the two intersecting um, orientations for those work planes. So literally that's placed in there. So I don't put the hole in the panel. I let that unit put the hole in. And you can see that's the basic interconnection there with no holes in. So if we use the sculpt tool, what that does is it drills straight through the whole assembly, even those drawers with all their sub-assemblies, and drills every occurrence, every, every time it sees one of our um, negative um, surfaces within the actual uh, model, it will actually remove that material. If it sees a positive um, joint, it will actually uh, add that material um, at this point as well. So you kind of do this at towards the end of the process, towards after the customer's made his mind up as to it's going into production. And what we're doing here is if we're doing this sculpt so we can show in our drawings the holes in the parts. So you can see straight away it's put all the hole information in there live for you. So it's really quick and easy. Um, obviously the more parts you've got and the more ho holes it needs to cut, the longer it's going to take. Um, but you're just talking about raw computing power. It's as it's simple as that. And everything will be updated automatically for you um, should you want to make a design change. So I'm aware of the time, um, we're just moving on um, very quickly to, uh, to the next part of the presentation which is a quick in-CAD render. So um, anybody that's uh, just using LT today might want to produce a quick render um, and Inventor offers this fantastic in, in, what I call in-CAD render. We can set to um, a re realistic visual style, we can play around with shadows and ray tracing um, and we can get some quite nice results. Um, and it's up to you. You can wait a few minutes, a few seconds um, to generate this information or you can you know, wait a few tens of minutes to, to create it. So depending on the quality um, that, that you're actually after. So 
you can see here, um, I think it's, it is speeded up, but after about, um, I think it's about 39 um, seconds, um, we've got something that's kind of quite usable. Um, and that's on the, uh, on the, on the good um, option there. So obviously um, you could just move it to the, um, to, the, to the higher best option. And again, you can see how it works. The little pixels get finer and finer and start to diminish, but it will take a lot longer. And again, I have, I have sped this little video up to uh, the one who sat here for, for tens of minutes, but you get the idea. The longer you leave it, uh, the better the image will get. And you, you can see some of the images in my presentation um, earlier today I've been using um, directly from this, uh, from this tool. So then the key thing here is, is to be able to create drawings. So in, in normal terms, um, creating drawings are a, by way of generating orthographic views. So you'll get the situation where um, maybe a customer will want to see a typical uh, elevation type drawing, maybe an isometric view. They might want to have some dimensions placed on it. And you can do that with Standard Inventor today. There's, there's nothing um, I'm showing you in this little section here at the moment um, that isn't sta a standard part of, of, a, of, of na Native Inventor. Um, we can actually balloon this information. We can actually place a um, parts list on the drawing as well. Um, and we can actually convey very clearly and concisely what, what it is the customer is going to get for them to enable us to, to kind of get that initial sign off. And at this stage, the model can be very simple. You know, we don't, we don't have to create the, the, the sculpted holes. We, um, we can keep it in its basic form. Um, and what we can do is we can then move this forward into the manufacturing information. So we've even got some section views we can create quite easily uh, on the drawing. So it's really just to kind of give you a, a taster of, of, for those people that are using LT today and AutoCAD, um, how quick and easy it is to create these views. But in essence, um, the crux of it is to, what do you do if you're a, a small um, joining, a joinery company where you know, you've just got, uh, you haven't got any CNC machines and you, you need to create kind of a drawing pack. You need to kind of tell someone um, exactly what it is that um, you, you, you're going to create. So we've got this auto plot tool. So the auto plot, we can predefine and pre-set up the views that we need to show in the drawing. And then what we can do is we can tell it whether we want whole tables to be placed. So we've got all the setting controls um, based within a sim single environment. We just you choose the template we want and off it goes. So just like cutting the holes, directly into the furniture. What we're doing here is we're now creating a single sheet that is the assembly file, um, which is again optional. You could just create detailed drawings and then it's going to create you a set of drawings uh, in this example for multiple sheets. So you can see it's created that front view set up for us, predefined views. You can still go in and interrogate and create your own views to suit. Um, that's not a problem. Um, you can still manipulate the views, just it's standard inventor, we're just building on the standard core functionality of, of, of the standard inventor engine, um, we're just automating uh, some of this information. So you can see straight away, here we've got the, um, we've got a particular panel, and we've got some annotations on it, we've got, this is the, uh, the worktop, it's cut the hole in for the USB power uh, connector there, and all of this is actually defined directly in the, uh, in the hole table. Um, so we just zip through all the different, this is one of the doors off of one of the drawers. Um, it's got some paint on it, which it's showing on the code of 0.3. So that's the, uh, the, the, the actual uh, thickness of paint there. So, you know, very quick, very easy to, to get a drawing bundle out. So it won't apply to everyone that's using CNC machines because they'll just want to take the 3D part. But, you know, it's a quick and easy way to get a complete snapshot of that assembly at that point in time. Um, of, of that design. And then just to wrap up, um, if you go uh, and invest in the uh, product design suite, um, which starts at the premium level, you get this fantastic showcase product. It's fantastic for customer review. So there's a slick workflow. You just go to the, um, 
showcase button with inside of Inventor and then that then places that model, it ports it directly into showcase for you, it just takes a few moments to load in and then you can start to manipulate it. So this showcase package is a way of showing in real time without the clutter of, of, of a CAD modeler the, the customer different alternatives um, and different comparisons. So straight away it pops in, which is a little bit of a reorientation here, and we can change the environment that the, uh, the model exists in very quick and easy. And you can see straight away it casts different shadows, it ports different materials in um, based on what you have inside of Inventor. And again, you can play around with the, uh, uh, the shadowing there. But it's all based on the um, lighting that's held within the environment. So... Um, I've got a, I'm going to, just going to cut in a moment to a, a more uh, sort of finished um, example. So you need to spend a little bit of time just applying a few materials um, and maybe setting up some shots. So these shots are fantastic where you can kind of tell a story. You can then um, basically toggle between these shots. So they're kind of pre-recorded little movies um, and we can save this out. And I've got an example at the end of the presentation. Um, just to show you uh, what, what can be achieved. I like this feature. It's um, being able to compare um, side by side customer examples. So in, the, in this where the customer um, doesn't know whether they particularly like the draw fronts and they're I mean, an ring over particular covers, colors, for example, you can play around with um, looking at different points of the model. Um, from different positions um, and reviewing different color schemes. So that could be a different texture on the, uh, on the timber. Um, it doesn't have to be um, specifically colors. Um, it could be positional representations of where the, um, you know, if the drawers are open on the, on the left-hand one and not on the right-hand one, for example. So you just play around with uh, toggling the, um, the options there. So really easy um, to kind of review this in front of the customer live. So just to recap on some of the benefits of what you've seen on the presentation today, so we're pretty much nearing the end now, That's a few more minutes, uh, we've covered off talking about taking the standard inventor model, but addre the, the, addressing the materials, the edge banding assignment, um, looking at work pieces um, and creating cost estimate, or sorry, the size estimates um, where it considers the grain direction, fixture placement, so iron mongery being placed, doing pre-drill information into the panels, uh, automatic builds of materials, so we call it a bomb specification directly out of the system, um, which is by far more comprehensive than you'll ever get um, trying to get Inventor to, to create that information. Um, and then the drawing bundle, so um, using the auto plot technology um, can, can save you um, a lot of time. Um, and if you wanted to, you can export uh, directly to um, other nesting programs. So you can get a CSV file uh, for, say, MagiCut that you can then import um, to create you your, um, your CNC information. So the time management kind of will reduce. So we were saying earlier, just to recap, 40% of the time is based on 3D modeling um, and 60% of the time is on preparing for, for manufacture. So using the Woodwork for Inventor add-on, you can reduce that. We've seen um, a compelling 30% um, and a big reduction on preparation. So it looks about a 50% um, time saving on um, creating this documentation um, and getting these models created as well. So automation is the name of the game. Being able to automate your design will allow you to reduce um, your errors. So reducing that interaction of, of human error um, can save you up to 80% fewer errors in your designs that we've seen um, out there. A couple of success stories and again you know it's working in, um, in real life uh, in action today um, at many companies. So just a couple of uh, takeaways there and I've got some examples to share with you. So it covers a, a, a wide variety so generally, it doesn't have to be just uh, shop um, sort of standard piece parts. It could be shop fit. Um, it could be display equipment. And uh, this is an example of a jewelry uh, display uh, equipment case. Again, shop fit. Again, um, furniture. Again, 
Uh, it could be door sets, so you could set up a parametric door set where the styles are changing on it. Um, and then basically you'll get a new drop document pack every time you to, to, to create all your piece parts. It could be staircases on the ornate style, on the traditional style. Um, it could be wardrobe systems, again, you know, fully detailed with drawer systems within. Um, it could be, uh, again, unique uh, pieces of, of furniture, desk systems, that sort of thing. Um, and as you've seen today in, in the presentation. Um, also, you can even use it, we've got people considering uh, for aircraft interior usage as well, because it's got a great way of defining the, uh, the lightweight honeycomb structure that um, is used typically in um, aircraft interior manufacture. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's got a, it's got, it's got a place and even you could take that analogy um, straight through for, for, for marine um, production as well. So design a complex, unique furniture, assignment of materials, visual material assignments, hardware assignments. Uh, we can do joint processing, automated bomb, um, and automated uh, drawing generation. So that pretty much concludes my whistle stop tour of uh, looking at Woodwork for Inventor. I, I hope you've enjoyed your, your time looking at the product today. Um, if you've got any questions, um, I'm happy to take those via email. I've put my email up in a moment. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more, um, I'll come back and we can have a phone conversation. Um, thanks for, for listening. Um, and there's my email. You can get me at graham.mansfield at microconcepts.co.uk. Please reach out to me. I'll be happy to, uh, to answer any questions you might have. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers now.